Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are checking out Coco's Creator because Coco's just went cyberpunk. See, Coco's Creator just recently released version 3.7.0 as well as quickly followed up with 3.7.1 and they also released a cyberpunk demo to go with it. So what you see in front of you, this is a prefab from the cyberpunk demo. As you can see, Coco's Creator is very Unity-like in the way that it works. It's got, you know, full animation tools like what we are seeing in action right in front of us. Uh, so you do have tools for blending animations, creating, previewing, and so on. You do have the ability to create prefabs. All of your coding and logic is done using a TypeScript or JavaScript programming. Uh, this is aimed at making uh, web and mobile titles, though of course you can make desktop titles. And one of the things with the 1.1 release is they added a whole lot of graphic fidelity to it, and that is why they released this Cyberpunk demo. So if you want to get in and check out what ca graphical capabilities the uh, Cocos Creator game engine now has, uh, you can see them in action in this particular demo. First, I'm just going to fly around the level a bit, and then I will load up the demo itself. And I do have to say, in terms of uh, controllability, the demo is a tad on the... Um the janky side, uh, but the fidelity is definitely there, and it does showcase you how to create a rather more complex game. So there is a quick pass around the level. Let's go ahead, so you can pick the various different scenes to load up here. I think I'm in the right scene, so I'm going to go ahead and launch it. It does run in your browser, so we're going to see how it looks right here. You've got the ability to run it in the editor as well, by the way, so you can emulate a number of different device resolutions over here. So if you are developing for mobile, those are your options available. We'll let this guy load up for one second. I do have the sound turned off just because it's kind of annoying during uh, you know, a demo like this. But if you do check it out, uh, sound is available as well. So we'll go ahead and load up this demo. So give it a second. Click the Start button. And it's a standard third-person style arena shooter. Uh, there are a couple of weapons available, like so. So I can run around the world. Other people will spawn. Uh, and then you can shoot at them. So again, here we got someone incoming. So shooting again like i said it's a little it's a little on the janky side to control it uh but you know, let's go take a look around the level instead uh so there are some power-ups and pickups uh, you do have the ability to jump and run and so on uh, I don't know why there is a de-resing effect on our character. I don't know if that's intentional or not. It is kind of frustrating. Uh, there is verticality to this level as well so if you want to go up and check things out they're available there otherwise let's try and shoot this guy. So I gotta, by the way, it's manual reload, which is a weird choice. So I don't know why he's not getting hit and dying, but that's a thing. Okay. So the first time I played this, they went down super easy. All right, let's go look at some of the verticality while I'm getting shot at instead. But it does give you an idea of the type of things that you can create with this. So here we go. Some power pickups right there. Uh, but the controls themselves are certainly a little on the jank side. But as you see, graphically, it is quite nice, especially for a game that can run uh, 60 frames per second, potentially inside of a browser. Um, so that there is uh, Coco's Creator. This is 1.71. We're going to go switch over to the uh, release notes in just a second. Take a look at uh, what is actually new in this particular release. But one last quick look at this demo they've put together. So if you want to learn how to use Coco's Creator, this is kind of structured like a full game. So as you can see here, again, we do have the various different prefabs available here. Uh, so those are the, the characters available. We've got... Uh, the mesh is brought in. Uh, you can see how scenes are set up. There are a number of development scenes, so you can see it's sort of a subset of what you are working with. Um, the scripting, as I mentioned earlier on, is all using TypeScript. So here you'll see we got a number of different uh, setups here. So uh, let's say, core, which one am I going to pick up? Uh, logic. Okay, here is actor, uh, crossbow logic. So here is the uh, code that would handle uh, using a crossbow. Uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, in terms of actor using a handgun. Code is available over here. So all of it is hooked up via a TypeScript type setup. The other thing you'll notice if you go back here and you pick on anything in the world, so let's grab this guy over here. Uh, it is a component-based game engine, so you see this guy is composed of a mesh renderer, uh, and then it's got the materials attached to it. You can edit and come in. There's visual editors for uh, materials in here. I think there is a visual shader editor in here as well. If you're wondering how you go about getting this guy, it's available in the store. So just go to Extensions Coco Store, and you will find the Cyberpunk version available right there. For some reason, it doesn't reload every time, which is a little frustrating when you open it up. But the Cyberpunk guy is available right here. It is a free download. Opens up a project that you can then go ahead and check out. So it does showcase uh, the graphical capabilities of 
of this engine. If you're looking for a lighter weight 3D game engine for, uh, say, mobile or web titles, it's not a bad pickup in that regard. So let's go check out what is new in 1.70. So I'm not sure if the skinning on their website is currently bugged because this is a very bright background. Sorry about your eyes. Uh, but we'll go through what the major features in 3.7 all are. So we've got things such as light probes. You can see character with light probes attached. Uh, Sphere is using light probes instancing here. Uh, so light probe editing is available in there as well. You also have reflection probes as of now. So you can see here on the right with reflection probes enabled, you definitely can see it in the uh, water and oil stains on the ground. Uh, again, the cyberpunk level is a good one to show off something like a reflection probe support. And here again is reflection probes on versus off. So you can really see like especially there to there, uh, what a refle reflection probe actually does for you. Uh, you get LOD support here. So this is basically as your camera gets farther away, it uses a lower polygon version of it. Uh, it is a performance optimization trick. So you can see here as they pulling away, they're going from 6 million down to uh, half of that number and less as it pulls out. LOD systems are pretty commonplace in terms of um, an optimization trick. And then we have uh, CSM, which is, uh, they should really say that right here because this is not a really common acronym. It's Cascading Shadow Maps, I believe. And here you can see uh, with CSM on and off as you get in, the shadows, see how the shadows as we went in here, they're, they're kind of crawling across the edge of the surface. And that is not ideal. Whereas here, as it zooms in, zooms out, switches between them, the transition is flawless and you do not get that weird crawling for the edge of the textures. Uh, so that is where these cascading shadow maps come in. Uh, we have post effects for bloom and uh, full FX AA. So anti-aliasing there. Uh, we've got a native engine for the editor support experimentally. So um, scene editor can run with the C++ based Windows Mac native Cocos engine. By the way, that engine, the underlying engine powering this is available open source. Uh, instead of the JS WebGL HTML5. So if you want to do this for um, native development, you're more interested in desktop, you want to squeeze out better performance and better world, you should be able to get that performance by turning this use native engine option on. Again, experimental, so expect it to not work that great, but this should actually cause a pretty big performance improvement for people using the editor. Uh, there is a new extensions manager for uh, managing extensions. Uh, splash screen, uh, options have been changed. So main updates temporary remove the user questionnaire interface, users can switch that on or off, remove splash um, background color settings and minimum display time for splash upgraded to uh, half a second. Uh, then we got uh, some resource management stuff in here as well. Uh, Mesh UV inspector, uh, we got improvements to the animation system enables you to uh, use the same animation on different characters. Uh, we've got improvements to the st uh, 2D state machine in the animation. Particle systems got a performance buff uh, and then other performance optimizations across the engine. So definitely a lot of improvements. And then after that, there was a 1.7.1 uh, release, but I think that was mostly just all about um, basically bug fixing. So uh, a solid release on the whole. Uh, and then also they did a document on uh, explaining the creation process behind uh, this demo itself. So uh, showcasing what they did, how it worked, how the renderers, uh, the various different uh, renderers were set up, custom renderers, the graphical features that were used and so on. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about this machine uh, and the baseline devices that are run on, which we're talking an iPhone 7 or a Snapdragon 835 chip, uh, should be able to run this demo. So. Uh, uh, that's kind of impressive in that regard. So if you want to learn a little bit more about this demo itself, uh, it is available here. Also kind of interestingly, uh, the project has just begun. Uh, so it verified many important features of it, but they will continue to iterate the gameplay and rendering performance, uh, which is good because like I said, the controls are pretty janky at this time. The gameplay itself is a little janky, but it does showcase the graphical capabilities of the engine. And hopefully it can attract more developer interest to Cocos, which is actually good because when I do a demo, when a new Cocos release is out there, it's always nice to have something aesthetically pleasing to actually showcase what the engine can do. And I would say for the most part that this is this is aesthetically pleasing. So I, I do like where they've gone there. I should actually try out that experimental C++ renderer, see how much smoother and faster it actually runs uh, natively. Uh, but yeah, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Coco's Creator, uh, we've got 3.7.1. I think I said 1.7.1 earlier, sorry about that. Uh, 3.7.1 um, is out, as is obviously 3.7.0. Uh, that was the major release there. Also, you can now grab this free Cyberpunk demo and check it out yourself. Uh, let me know what you think of of Coco's creator of the cyberpunk demo and of game engines in general in the comments down below. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.